Today, guys, we're going to continue our uh, decimal theme, and we're going to look at comparing decimals today um, and how we might do that. Uh, you can see I've got my uh, place value chart over here, and that's going to be really important uh, for comparing, and then when we go on to uh, ordering them later on as well. So we're going to compare these two numbers. We've got 3.6, and we've got 3.19. Now, you can see, obviously, that's got 6 tenths, um, and then we've got one tenth here and nine hundredths at this point. Okay, so if we put that into our place value chart just to make sure we know what we've got, it's so got 3.6 there, and then underneath that, we've got 3.19. Now, the way we compare numbers is we always start at uh, the furthest column left. So if we're looking at these two numbers, you can see that in the units column, because that's the biggest column in our place value chart, we haven't got tens, we haven't got hundreds, so our units is the only one that we can compare. We're going to start in this column, we're going to move our way uh, to the right. So if we look at these two, we've got three and three, obviously they're the same, so we then need to look to the next column of which side uh, is the biggest. Now you can see that although this hasn't got any hundreds, it's got six tenths and this only got one tenth. So it means that this number here, 3.6, must be the biggest. So putting in one of our greater than or equal signs, because it's obviously not equal, um, it's going to go that way. Okay, so let's try another one of those. So if we have this time, let's try 1.8 and 1.09 so guys if you pause the video now and you can have a go and then you can see uh, how you've got on after okay so same again then if we put our numbers into our place value chart over here you've got 1.8 and we've got 1.09 1 so again Starting in this column here on this left, we can see they've both got this both got the same amount of units, so we can't judge whether one is bigger than the other at this point. And then if we move to this column, we can see that this 1.8 has got 8 tenths, and this has got 0 tenths. So again, because this column is bigger than this column, 1.8 must be the largest number. So this part of the lesson, guys, we're going to have a look at uh, ordering uh, these four numbers. We've got these got 123.8, got 123.08, 123.18, and then 123.808. So we're going to have a go at putting those in uh, ascending order. So that is from smallest uh, to largest. Okay. So the first thing again we need to do um, really is to compare the digits that are on the left and if you look so this is our would actually be our hundreds column uh, they're all the same okay they've all got ones all got 100 in each of the numbers and then if we look to the column to the right then as we said in the last uh, little clip you've got uh, two which in the tens column so they all match as well okay so at the minute all of the numbers are going to start with that right there okay and then if we look in the next column along, which is the units, we've got a three in every one as well. So again, at this point, we can't begin to uh, order them at all. Okay. So what we now need to do is maybe look in the tens, tenths, sorry, column, um, and we're looking for the smallest digit now. So in the ten, tenths column comes after the decimal point. So the, the one after the decimal point, well, that's an eight. That's a zero, so that's less than that. That's a one, so that's slightly more than that one. And this one's an eight, too. Okay, so our smallest one has to be uh, this one here. Okay, so I'm just going to tick that one and put that one in on here. Um, and the way I'm going to order these is I'm not going to do them like they are here. I'm going to do them in a line, and I'm going to show you how that's useful uh, at the end. 
Okay, so our next number then we can put, we know that these are all the same, so that can go in there. Okay, and then we're now looking for um, a digit in our tenths column, which is larger than zero. So that's got an eight, uh, that's got a one, and that's got an eight. So it must be this one here. Okay, so point one eight, and again we can write this to our next one. And again, we're looking in this tenths column again. Now, if we look at these last two numbers, we've got an eight in our tenths column. We've got an eight in our tenths column here. So then we'd need to move to the next column. Well, this hasn't got any here, look. So it would have been a zero in our hundredths. And this has got a zero in our hundredths. Okay. Um, but this one has got eight thousandths. So this one is eight thousandths bigger than this one okay so in terms of our largest number it'll be that one so we can put 123.8 in there and then we can finish off our last number which is eight zero eight okay and the reason for me putting them in a vertical order rather than in horizontal it really helps to check the digits you can really quickly see like the ones all match the twos in the tens column all match the units uh, all match is three but then this is where we started to uh, have a little bit of difference and that's where we started to uh, begin to uh, be able to order these so we've if you look that's the smallest one there we've got zero we've got uh, one there and then we've got an eight and we've got nothing in this column and we've got only got thousands so therefore you can quickly see uh, that that's the correct order from smallest to large. Obviously, if you want to do it the other way around, you would just need to reverse uh, the digits. Okay, so a really useful tip is to put them in a vertical order and it helps you really check at the end. Okay. Uh, moving on to English then, uh, guys, um, what I hoped uh, or what I thought would be a really nice uh, idea for this week is uh, for you to try and write um, a story, uh, a narrative piece of text uh, to, en uh, to engage the reader as much as possible. Um, and one of the ideas, uh, based on the book that we've been reading, The Holes, um, I thought it might be a nice idea to do a, a portal story. So uh, my idea was that uh, Stanley was digging a hole uh, and he dug a little bit too far and that's when he sort of fell into a new uh, world. But before we do that, we're going to look at um, using the same skills of um, building up suspense and tension. And if you look at this text that I've given you, so touching the void, uh, that is in your pack. Um, we're just going to just discuss a little bit how the author has gone about creating that uh, suspense and that tension and to really engage the reader uh, as they're reading through it. So if we start off, um, we're just going to look at the introduction. So that's uh, this section here for today. Um, one of the things that the author does is he uses uh, the adverb only. OK, so if you look uh, there, he says, the only support was a thick rope that I was clinging on for dear life. And that suggests to the reader that he's only got one option, and that's that rope. The only thing that's saving him from falling to his death is that one rope. So that, that really good use there of that um, only adverb uh, gives the reader a sense that you know he is really, really in trouble at this point. Okay, moving on then. Um, next part, if you see, it says, even though I was attached to the rope, I didn't care. I didn't really care about anything at that point, only if I would live. Now, what we've got there, look, is a suggestion um, that he's, he didn't really care about anything at that point. So that suggests that he's not thinking as he normally thinks. Um, and again, that creates a sort of sense of panic and an understanding that, you know, he's really in trouble at this point. Um, so moving on to another uh, strategy that the uh, author has chosen to use. Um, 
if you see, and this is one we've discussed in class uh, many times before, you've got this uh, nowhere to go and nowhere to go. And obviously we call that uh, repetition. Now it's repetition uh, put in there on purpose uh, for an effect. So remember, we don't want to repeat things generally in our writing, but when we do it for an effect, um, it makes uh, it makes the author really sort of take notice. It emphasizes that point um, that, you know, he's got no options. And again, it links back to this only adverb. You know, he only had one option. And here, look, nowhere to go, nowhere to run. So it really creates that sense that, you know, he's running out of options now. And, and then the, abs the classic that we um, often discuss uh, is these short sentences here. So I was searching, shrieking and screaming at, at the top of my voice. No answer. I tried again. No answer. OK, so we've got a little bit of repetition mixed in as well. But... Yeah, this time, again, some really short sentences. And what that does is for the reader is um, it speeds it up a little bit, suggesting that, you know, you know, may, you know, the time that he might fall is, is going to happen. It's getting closer and closer. So it builds up that tension and speeds the story up. And then finally, the, the last thing on here is uh, this question that we've talked about before. Um, not a rhetorical question this time. Uh, just a question to get the reader thinking and the reason that that's good and particularly placing that here before the next paragraph is it makes the reader want to read on because you know it gives us a question to really th consider when we're reading the text okay so there are the little techniques that the author has used um, and don't worry if this week um, you know you you're going to struggle to write a, t a text. This is just my idea that um, you could write this type of text. It doesn't need to be. Um, if at the end of the week you've got a narrative that engages me, um, I'll be really looking forward to reading that. So one of your challenges then uh, for uh, today is to just rewrite a sort of paragraph just like this one um, and if you like imagine that Stanley's just uh, dug a hole a little bit too deep and he's about to fall into that hole um, and just have a go at using some of the techniques that the author's used here just to try and uh, build that tension uh, and build that suspense uh, for the reader you know try and make the reader feel a little bit scared for the character at this point.